Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar with Jana Stride. My name is Sophie Sparks. I'm the Community Manager here at the Information Lab, and it is lovely to have you join us today for this very special guest webinar we have with Jana. Jana is the Performance Analysis Technical Lead and Learning and Community Performance Data Lead at the English Institute of Sport. Now, that's a pretty big title to have, um, and that's because she splits her time across two different roles, the um, Performance Analyst Technical Lead and um, as a Tableau um, community advocate at the EIS, which is a learning and community performance data lead part. Now, as a performance technical analysis, Jana has um, around 10 years of elite um, sport performance analysis experience, and she's worked at um, places like the English Institute of Sport and um, British GB Taekwondo. Um, she's also supported, uh, provided analysis support for over 140, that's a huge number of competitions, including the Olympics and other world and European multi-sport events. So I am super excited to have her here today. Jana, would you like to um, unmute yourself and share your screen? Yeah. Perfect. Wonderful, thank you very much, Sophie. So it's great to have you here. So I'll let you know when I can see your screen. Okie dokie. Can you see that? Right, it looks perfect. Wonderful, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Sophie, and thanks to everyone for, for coming. So I'll give you a bit of a bit of a background. Sophie's given me uh, a little bit of an introduction there, but I'm aware a few people may not be fully up to date with what exactly a performance analyst is and what it means. So, um, yeah, I've been involved in the British Elite Sport, uh, sport System for about 10 years, so since 2011, whilst in my third year at uni. So I was a fresh faced 20, 21 year old at the time. Um, and I was very lucky that I managed to do a, a placement with GB Taekwondo through the English Institute of Sport at the time. And that led to an opportunity to work in, um, in the performance analysis capture service, which is very similar to what uh, I'll be talking about today. Um, in London 2012 and that is the opportunity that really got me recognised um, and it was from there I was able to get full-time employment from January 2013 with GB Taekwondo through the EIS, the English Institute of Sport and that's a role which I developed in up until earlier this year when I stepped aside to take on a data community role um, which I'll describe shortly. So um, I won't go into a huge amount of detail on any of my roles, but it was the, the practitioner role, so the role with GB Taekwondo, um, that blended both sort of video and data analysis to support competition and, and training through technical and tactical analysis of performance, which probably doesn't mean a huge amount to, to other people, but essentially trying to find those small gains for performance advantage. Um, and to be honest, it was, it was probably in the Rio cycle, um, towards the latter end of that, that my Tableau journey actually began. And I decided that when the EIS invested into Tableau, one day I decided I was no longer going to use Excel for any form of data visualization anymore, which was a big step. Um, and then further down the line, I decided I was no longer gonna use Excel for any calculations and forced myself to learn Tableau that way. Um, and then it was in 2018, that I got my second role alongside my practitioner role as a PA technical lead. And basically um, I support other analysts working within the IS in a variety of different sports and help to contribute to the, the direction and the evolution of the discipline itself. Um, and this role has also provided me an opportunity to grow my own Tableau skills. And I've done that through supporting other PAs to problem solve with Tableau. Um, and also through the likes of the information lab and getting their support with training or uh, doctor sessions and, and things like that. So we've been very lucky to incorporate Tableau for, for quite a few years into various different roles. And at the end of, end of last year, I picked up um, the role that I have now alongside the technical lead role, um, which is aimed at creating a, a data community and supporting in the development of, of data learning content and opportunities for the whole EIS organization really. So a bit wider than the discipline that I specialized in. 
So a huge opportunity to uh, make a difference in the organisation itself. And Tableau, again, has been part of that, that journey. So that's a little bit about me, just for some background. And now I'll go into the actual specifics of, of the project itself and where that came from. So um, I suppose the project itself, um, it was a workout Wednesday that I had seen on Twitter and thought, oh, that looks very familiar to something that I'm working on. Um, and got in touch with your very own Lorna Brown at the Information Lab and said that I'd been working on something very similar and whether it'd be worth touching base at some point post games. So we, we got a meeting together a couple of weeks ago. Um, I got to grips a little bit with, with the Workout Wednesday side of things. And then I shared what I'd been doing for the Team GB Performance Analysis Service. And we decided that it would be worthwhile trying to get a webinar or something up and running. The only caveat to that was that we had about two weeks to get it all signed off and organised. Um, I'm actually off on maternity leave, literally on Thursday. So um, bear with me as I am 38 weeks pregnant and my head is obviously elsewhere sometimes. So bear with me slightly, bit of a bit of an announcement there. Um, so yeah, a bit of a background to the project. So around August 2019, I was actually recruited to be part of the four PAs that were heading out to the Games to deliver this Team GB Performance Analysis Service. Um, and the aim of that was to support with the planning and the delivery of the service, which would support a decent number of Team GB sports with video and video analysis support during the Games. Um, and then um, a small thing called COVID hit last year. The games got postponed. Um, I also managed to tear my ACL earlier that year, which is another complication to the year. Um, and then earlier this year, um, I found out the news that we were going to have a baby. And obviously that naturally changed plans. And I had to unfortunately step away from the role uh, that was meant to be heading out to Tokyo but was very grateful to our head of service and the head of, of the Tokyo service, Julia Wells, who supported me in um, the decision to continue part of the role in, in the planning element of it. So I had a very clear remit now where I was literally focused on the schedule and helping that team to coordinate around that schedule to ensure all all videos were, were recorded and made available however needed. Um, so there was a bit of a needs analysis there. So we I knew that we needed to um, create some sort of workload planning tool that functionally worked. There was a visual element to that that would support them during the games as well as helping with the planning of it. Um, there was the consideration of having an eight hour time difference. So there were two teams. So Julia's team were based in Tokyo in the Performance Lodge. Um, and we also had a UK team based in Cardiff with an eight hour time difference, both doing the same kind of job. So we needed to coordinate between those really effectively. Uh, there was a, a load more additional key detail to what we were originally given that needed to be incorporated into the data to ensure that it covered all the bases we needed it to cover. Um, we also needed it to be able to be updated and additional detail added throughout the games as well as prior to. So that was another consideration. It needed to be accessible on and offline just in case anything went down. And I also needed to be able to hand it over to one of the, the team members or multiple team members to manage during the games period. So I needed to make sure it was as easy as possible to use in the time that we've got. So there were quite a few key considerations around those backgrounds, uh, background needs. And in terms of resources, we had, um, we'd done a similar service at the two previous games. So we knew what it needed to be and we knew what worked well. I also had two team leaders, Julia and then Karis Jones, who's based in, in the UK team, who headed up the teams. Both had experienced the service before. So again, we knew what worked, we knew what we wanted. I just needed to make it happen. 
And we were then given um, an Excel from the Olympic Broadcast Service or OBS service um, containing every potential video feed that would be available to us during the games. And at this, in the early stages, that was uh, probably an overestimation of feeds, if anything. Um, so it wasn't a true, true match to what actually happened, but it was something to go off. Um, everything that had been done previously for other games had been done purely in Excel. Um, and for me, this simply wasn't really going to be an option now. I felt that we'd come a long way and we needed to we needed to show that and, and use a different tool. And Tableau seemed like the perfect option for me. Uh, for the job and I was very lucky that when I said I didn't want to just replicate what had been done before that I was given full freedom to explore and figure out exactly what what could be done and whether Tableau was capable of doing it which of course it was. So I'll take you through sort of an end-to-end -end process roughly um, so there was um, first thing I got shown was the Rio game schedule which was done purely in Excel. I won't go into a huge amount of detail on this, um, but hopefully you can see that. So if you can see that. I hope so anyway. Um, so this was a master copy of various different bits of detail. You can see it's quite a messy spreadsheet. We had a day-by-day -day schedule for each and every day of the games. Again, looks like a hell of a lot of, of um, manual input, I'd say, more than anything. Uh, another view here, various different ways of looking at it. But again, a lot of detail, um, not the prettiest, not the most easy to digest. So for me, that just wasn't the option to use. Um, so step two was having a look at the data set that we were given, uh, which was called the OVP schedule. Um, so let me open that one up. So again, I won't go into huge amounts of detail, but you can see it's, it's fairly tidy. It's in a decent format. There's no merged cells or anything like that. I had to figure out what each row represented. So each row is a video feed. Um, it did have some confusing field titles like TX, start time and end times, ES, lots of codes and no guidance on what that, they actually meant. So my first task was to figure that out, really. There's a lot of timing fields in here. So as I say, we have the TX starts and end time. We have a coverage start and end time. And there's also what was called an ES start and end time. So I had to figure out what they meant as well and which one was appropriate for us. And also there were, these are only in Tokyo time. And obviously we had a UK team as well. So I needed to make sure that that was factored in. But usable, the data was usable. So I was confident that I could do something with it in Tableau. Okay, so step three was to assess the possibilities within Tableau. So for me, this was the real fun bit of actually just having a play with the data. Um, so yeah, I, I had real good fun here, just having a little bit of a mess about really um, to see what I could do with what we've got. And then there was a few little challenges in there. So working with time in Tableau, I'd done bits of before, but I think it's fair to say it isn't the easiest thing to get your head around sometimes. So um, I had a bit of a play with that. I knew I needed UK and Tokyo time to be incorporated, uh, preferably into one visualization, because I didn't want to have to have a UK workbook and a, and a Tokyo workbook. And um, so getting everything into one place was important. And I was really keen on the idea once I'd had a play around having a, a Gantt with the duration of each feed, uh, making up that, that size of the Gantt. And, and trying to make that work. So figuring things out as I went around that. And then I got feedback from the team leaders on that, but I will give you a little bit of a showcase of what that initially looked like in its basic form. 
in Tableau. So I'll start with that one. Um, so initially it was just number of sports per day, um, which is quite a nice way to look at the games anyway, is a bit of an overview. Number of sports per day, um, when they were on down here, and then you can see I've done a little tool tip with when those sessions were on, also incorporated as well. Uh, and that feeds from this. So this was the day by day schedule, looking at each and every sport, what time they started, what time they finished. We have Tokyo time at the top, we have UK time at the bottom, and then they could literally flick through here. So this is on UK time. If they were the Tokyo team, they could flip to Tokyo time. Um, and that was sort of a first initial stab without getting all of the additional detail included in there. Um, yeah, a nice little stab to get the team thinking about what they wanted this to do and what they wanted it to look like. Okay. And then after that, after getting a lot of feedback from um, Julian Carries, I'm fairly happy with the direction I was going visually with it. There was the um, added complication of a lot of additional data that we needed to incorporate that wasn't in the original OVP schedule, Excel. So one thing we needed to consider that we're only doing a service for Team GB. So only Team, G sport, team GB sports needed to be um, filtered at least. Um, we also need to consider that we probably didn't need to look at the sports that didn't require the PA service out there. So again, being able to filter that sort of information out. And then it was extra details like what was the level of service they did they require? Who was the lead sport contact for the sport if anything went wrong or if they needed some more information, who could they contact within the sport and how? Um, where did they want their videos to be uploaded to and stored? And then it came down to things like who was going to look after that sport within the team? Was it going to be the UK team? Was it going to be the, the Tokyo team? And who within those teams was going to lead on that? And were there going to be multiple people that, that potentially needed to look after that sport? Because we were looking at two, two feeds per, uh, two licenses per person, basically. So um, it meant that pretty much they had two laptops per person to, to deal with. So it limited what each person could do, made it manageable for them, but also meant we had to divvy up a lot of sports between quite a lot of people in the end, uh, which I'll go to through in a little bit more detail. Um, general shifts, so Julia and Karis as the team leaders were doing less capturing and more management of the team and being on hand, on hand to support. Um, factoring that into the data so that we could visually see when they were going to be on duty because it wasn't as simple as when they were looking after a certain sports feed. Um, also Tokyo and UK team meetings or calls needed to be factored in so we could see when they were going to happen. And then additional team workloads as well. So there were hot desks that were available. So if we need to assign a hot desk, could we have that within the data? If one of the um, Team GB PA service analysts needed to go and do something for their sport elsewhere. Could we factor that in so we can see that they're unavailable to do something else and that kind of thing. Um, obviously, that it that there are other ways, there were definitely other ways that we could have gone about this, but all of the team that were in both of those teams were very familiar with Excel. And I really needed to consider that handover piece. So also because we were up against time to get this ready and working and handed over prior to the game starting, Excel, Excel seemed like the best option. So it, that was sort of the next bit on this, this additional data element was to create some data sets that could be used alongside the original OVP schedule to bring that detail in and make it as easy to use as possible. Now, there's definitely, well, it wasn't the slickest of ways to do it. Um, definitely would have looked into it in a little bit more detail had I had the time, but this is how we got around it. And I won't go into huge amounts of detail again on, on each of these Excels, but probably the, the first one, there with me while I open it, um, was 
of getting those PA service requirements out there. So this was a, a table that I created that allowed us to say whether the sport was Team GB or not, whether they needed um, the PA service or not, or if they did, was it just that they needed a license or did they need a, um, a really on standby just in case, that kind of thing. Who was going to capture it? Who was the lead and any subsequent um, analysts capture? Uh, who was the representation, a representative of the sport? Where did it need to be stored? Was post capture okay or did it need to be live capture? Well, this is very much a, a basic Excel that allowed Julia and Karis to populate this with the detail that they needed whilst I could, could continue with developing the other elements of it. But I knew that it was it was compatible with the original OVP schedule as it was this particular column that we, the ES type column that is what we joined everything together with. Okay. So there's that one. There was um, a general shift. Close that as well. There was a general shift Excel, which again just this looks very very similar when it decides it's going to open. There we go. General shift Excel, which looks very similar to the OVP schedule. In fact, it had exactly the same um, field names, but this allowed me to do a row per shift for both Karis and Julia, um, which enabled us to visualize when they were going to be either in the building and available to support or at least on call. And also those team meetings that I described as well, being able to schedule those in. So finding a way just to get them within the data and that having this in exactly the same format, same field headings meant I could just union that with the, um, the OVP schedule at the end. And then similarly, we had um, the Tokyo, the hot desks and extras Excel. And the reason I did them in separate Excels was so that the, the rest of the team could figure out where they needed to, to change things if they did. So we had a few different scenarios for the hot desks and team duties. So we had some sports that just required a hot desk space. So they didn't need the service to capture anything. They just needed a, a license to capture and to record and to record their, their own footage, basically. And then we had certain sports where they required the PA service, but they also had an analyst out there to capture as well, which would mean I needed duplicate rows of the same data. Um, it got complicated. I also needed to consider that the OVP schedule, I could get another update from uh, the Olympic Broadcast Service. So I needed to keep that as standard as possible without making too many changes. So this allowed me to add in those extra rows of data somewhere else and then union it later just to keep it nice and tidy for the guys that were going to be managing it. Um, we also had a scenario where one of the capture service analysts um, said that their, the sport that they normally work with had a warm-up session that wasn't going to be covered within um, the OBS feeds but there was a potential that he would have to potentially go to the venue and record that himself using a, using a camera. Um, and again, because that was taking him out of the service, we needed to make sure that that was factored in um, to the visualization so that we could schedule around it. So there's quite a few bits that went into that, but again, same data, um, data format, which allowed us to just union that detail on top and make sense of it later. Let me close that one as well. And then finally, there was just a few little tweaks to the OVP scheduling original document, which just made life easier later on, really. So I added a row ID in uh, just to make things easier uh, to find later on. And then um, an assigned PA column in here, which basically fed from that PA requirements Excel. And um, Again, Lorna said that once I showed her this, there was probably a way to do this in prep, but I didn't think about it at the time. So I ended up doing a, an index match to the column in the PA service requirements to do uh, to find that sport lead initially. Um, and that 
filled this in for me with who was looking after that sport predominantly. And then once I'd got the data into Tableau itself, I could then start divvying up the, the feeds a little bit more fairly across different people based on the visualization. So I actually use the visualization to change the, the data later as well, which I'll, I'll go in a bit more detail. But again, because of that handover piece, it meant that because the assigned PA detail was in this Excel, they could go in and change who was looking after that particular feed as needed without any input from me, really. Okay, so getting towards the fun bit now. So once I'd done all of that, the, the next stage was piecing all that data together to, again, just to have one output that made it simple for everyone to, that was going to use it to use. So I used Tableau Prep um, to bring all of that together. So we had the three um, data sets with the same kind of um, structure, union together, uh, the sport requirements joined here, and then a little bit of additional cleaning, got rid of some duplicated fields, um, renamed the fields to make them make a little bit more sense because, as I said before, they were pretty nasty, nastily worded for anyone that didn't know what they were. And then I did the, the time calculations to get UK time included within prep instead of in desktop. Now I knew what I was doing with them. So um, again, just kept it tidy and made it a little bit more bulletproof on the other end of it. And created um, another, another uh, tableau from there, um, iterating on the previous one with the extra detail. And it was basically then just an iterative process with Julia and Karis to get it to the finished product. Um, so I will now show you what that ended up looking like. So obviously the original Tableau desktop file that I showed you was, um, this particular view was number of sports per day, which is useful for the general public to look at. Um, but what we actually needed was number of feeds per day and to be able to filter that down to the feeds that were relevant to the service. So we could have had hundreds in there if we'd, we'd got everything ticked, but we just needed to have the ones that were of interest to us uh, available. So I kept sports per day in there just out of interest. We have feeds per day so we could see which days were going to be really busy for the team. So you can see the, the 24th, 25th, in particular were very busy those first couple of main days of the games uh, and then underneath being able to see which sports had the most feeds on so like artistic gymnastics had a lot of feeds because they had a feed for every single apparatus and then a, another feed which had uh, like, it was like an integrated feed that hopped around them and um, so again being able to get that in there and then get who was assigned to what as a tooltip in there as well so that was sort of an overview kind of um, view of, of the data. Um, I'll take you to the day by day schedule as well now. So this is the same as I showed you before for day by day, but you can see there's a hell of a lot more detail in there now. So we have the UK and the Tokyo time still, but we have whether it's Tokyo team, UK team, which person within that team is looking after it, remembering that they could only do two feeds at any one time um, so being able to get that into there we have Tokyo hot desks in there uh, and then some to, to be confirms that we can drop out for, for the visual um, so yeah you can see you've got a general shift here for, for Julia you've got a general shift for Karis here we've got a team call factored in uh, we've got Julia Wells was looking after the OBS licenses, giving them to different people that just needed the license and didn't need anything capturing by the team themselves or just by the analysts that worked with them. So having them factored in and named so that we knew. Um, hockey, for example, was on standby because there were analysts working there, but Emma was on standby to help with that if needs be, but that needed to be factored in just in case she had to jump ship so we could see. And it was this particular view that pretty much I went through 
and assigned everyone to the particular fields, logging back into the, the Excel and changing things and having a look what it affected, how it affected the visual. Till eventually we got two definite feeds per person and then trying to keep that relatively as consistent as possible throughout the games period. So we could see that, for example, um, Olivia covered gymnastics every single day. Elliot covered tennis every single day. Uh, Emma did equestrian. And then towards the end, we were getting into athletics and things like that, which is where the Tokyo team got really busy. Um, and we can start to see how I juggled them around. But yeah, we, uh, we use this very much as a visual to help with the data collection end of it as well, almost, to help organize everything and then revisualize it. So yeah, that was that thing. They could, they could look at just their own team. So the Tokyo team quite often just had the Tokyo one up, as did the UK team, or they could look at if they needed to change something and it needed to be split between the two teams, they could make a decision based on who had availability and who didn't. Um, the next request was for like a, a team overview. So you can see who was covering what on what day, which allowed us to try and find days um, where people could have a day off more than anything uh, and potentially get people to finish a little bit earlier as the, as the games quietened off a little bit. So that allowed us to do that. So you could see, again, we could just get down to look at just the UK team and see who's on shift when. And who they're looking, who they're looking after, um, and then similar to the day by day, I did exactly the same same sort of format. But you could look at a specific individual within the team, so they could have a, a breakdown of their actual schedule. So that's Emma. Um, I could pick. Um, who should I pick from the other team? Yanis from the other team in there. Um, Sorry, that was the same team, Jack. But what was what I wanted to do with this particular one is you can see that the UK team has labels in UK time, whereas the, um, the Tokyo team guys had it in Tokyo time. Um, again, just for ease for them. And then a few other little views just for detail, really. So this was essentially the same table that's in the PA service requirements Excel, but in Tableau, so it's all in one place. So they could look for a sport and see what the requirements were and who was looking after the capture of them, um, whether it was live capture, post capture, whatever, and where it needed to be stored. And then there was an, a, a bit of a graph that was requested to look at when the busy times were. So the, the sort of teal colored line was the Tokyo hot desks. Uh, but the main two lines are the, the blue team being the Tokyo team and the red line being the UK team. So you can see where they had busy days. Um, so you can see that uh, the UK team had a really, really tough start and dwindled off nicely. And then the Tokyo team had a little bit more of a relaxed start and picked up more at the end. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty much it for, for the views. And then... Obviously, the sharing element of this, we had, we had, mo most people had a Tableau desktop license. Um, Tableau server we have in the EIS, but not everyone's set up to it. And it's managed by a separate um, discipline, if you like, to, to PA. So it wasn't as easy as just being able to hand out viewer licenses. We also had the added, com added complication of the fact that. Uh, not all of the analysts that were in the, the UK and Tokyo team were EIS. So they were externals, which made things slightly more complicated. But we did have a very easy way to, to file share using OneDrive. Um, so we had a server version, which could be managed by Julian Karis and a few of the others. Um, but we also did a, a Tableau reader version that could work offline as well, um, just, just for safety really, because we did have one, one day where um, our server went down and I was very glad that we'd, we'd thought about that and scenario plan that one, because it meant that those guys was, were still able to access all of this and use this effectively. Um, 
and then yeah handed this over to um a few of the guys um so we had a couple of people in the tokyo team and a couple of people in, in the uk team that were able to manage this going forward which meant that i could sit back and actually enjoy the games for the first time in quite some time um from the comfort of my own home which was lovely um yeah that is i think pretty much it so i'm happy to go into some more detail or take questions or whatever um as needed really hi yana thank you so much for that Wow, my audio is terrible. <laughs> Let's see, is that any better? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, I think <laughs> my audio to me just then sounded like I was stuck in a blender or something like that. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for your, for your talk. That was really interesting. And I think it's a great use case of Tableau to show how you can use it for scheduling, but also then combine other charts that are a bit more traditional, like that line chart in, in the same, using the same data set and to get sort of insights out at one time. Um, just as we, uh, I don't see any questions in the chat at the moment. So um, anyone who's listening, if you have any questions for Yana, please drop them into the chat now so we can, um, so she can answer them for you. Just in the meantime, Jana, um, as people maybe type in um, into the chat box, how how repli uh, after the schedule you've made, how replicable do you think it would be for maybe future um, future sporting events or games? Would people be able to reuse this effectively template you've made? Oh, incredibly, I think now now that it's been figured out I suppose it's it's just a case of getting it depends what the data's like in the first instance so um providing that the data set is clean and it's at a similar level of detail so we had um a feed per row if you like um then I don't see there being a huge amount of of issue replicating what I've done and to all the the guys that are EIS that um potentially would want to do this with their sports or in the future for, for other multi-sport events, then I'd be happy, happy to share how to do that kind of thing as well. Um, we're quite good at sharing within the IS. So um, yeah, I definitely support them to do that. It's, it's doubly good. Not only did it really help out for, for the, uh, the Tokyo 2020 games, but also it could help out for future ones as well. It's makes it yeah. extra extra good to know absolutely and i think we've we've raised the bar this time from obviously the the excels that were done previously for, for london and, and for rio so hopefully we can raise the bar again for paris fantastic and those those excel sheets looked very complicated so the tableau ones look much cleaner and much less likely for somebody to accidentally delete all the data within one cell and then <laughs> then you know maybe the, the rowing wouldn't be happening. It would be, just nobody would know about it. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, I don't see any questions that have come through, so we'll wrap it up there. Thank you so, so much, Yana, for joining, and good luck with motherhood. Thank you. We'll be, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to catch up with you again sometime in the future when you're, you're back from mat leave and rejoining the world. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I look forward to it. Fantastic. Thank you so much and have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.